Hello and welcome to Witchy Wellness Radio. I'm your host, Lauren Chalantani, women's holistic health coach and fellow recovering perfectionist. This podcast was created to show you that your body is not in the way, it is actually leading your way. Hello and welcome back to Witchy Wellness. You are listening to episode 127, Reclaim Your Right to Grow Old with Kathleen O'Brien. A few words from our sponsors. Living the Good Life Naturally Magnesium is my go-to brand for transdermal application. Did you know that your stress and diet and lifestyle alone can increase your magnesium burn rate, which means depletes you even faster. While using a product like a soak or a lotion on your skin, magnesium is easily absorbed and can replenish your macronutrients. To learn more, listen to episode 73 with founder Kristen Bowen and head over to the show notes to use that link and make sure to use code WITCHY, W-I-C-T-H-Y, for 10% off of your purchase. And Institute for Integrative Nutrition is the school I went to nearly seven years ago. It started me on this health and wellness and eventually spiritual and self-help journey. It's not just a program if you want to become a coach. I started it for my own well-being and health. And not only did I learn so much from this experience, but I made so many deep, authentic friendships, but was propelled into this online world. And I love it so much. I'm a part of their referral program. If you guys head over to the show notes or my website, laurenchalantani.com slash IIN, you can sign up for a free class to see what they have to offer. And if you're interested, make sure that you mention that Lauren Chalantani referred you because you guys are able to get the latest and greatest discounts available. And without further ado, please enjoy episode 127, Reclaim Your Right to Grow Old with Kathleen O'Brien. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Witchy Wellness Radio. This is a show that you learn how your body and your emotions are not in the way, but actually leading your way. And our shining example of a guest today, Kathleen O'Brien, is here to talk about aging and claiming your right of aging. And a little bit more about Kathleen before we jump in. She began her career as an advertising copywriter and went on to forge her path as a successful television broadcaster in three major markets. She had built a video production company from the ground up, serving Fortune 100 companies nationwide, while simultaneously making a name for herself. We'll talk more about this in a minute, I'm sure, as a prolific voiceover actress, model, and screenplay writer. She does it all, folks. Though her interest in aging had not yet surfaced, Kathleen's media background served as a perfect pretext for understanding the functions of ageism in modern society. Her curiosity about aging finally came to a head with the approach of her 60th birthday, a milestone that now represents the beginning of revitalizing a second act. Kathleen spent the following 12 years researching aging and finally found herself back in the classroom, this time teaching her own philosophy on aging through the University of Denver's continuing education program. And now, at the proud age of 72, Kathleen has just written her first book, Reclaim Your Right to Grow Old, which takes a deep dive into society's misguided attitude towards aging and highlights all the wonders that lie ahead for those of us who dare to grow old. You guys can find her book on Amazon and in Bards and Noble now. Whew, that is like such a beautiful bio. You have earned that bio. Thank you and welcome to the show, Kathleen. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lauren. I am delighted to be here. And by the way, I just had another birthday. So I am 73 <gasps> now. All right. Yes. Yay. Yes. I'm a great believer in telling your age. So I just want to set the record straight. I'm on my way well into my 70s and enjoying it very much. Yeah, I have to say my um, mom and I were looking at photos of my great grandma's 85th birthday. I was I was pretty young when this happened and my grandma, so down a generation, just turned 85 a few weeks ago. And even our societal views from 
let's say 20, 30 years ago, what 85 looked like to today has completely changed. And I think we're just at the, not even the tip of that iceberg right now, but people who are doing this work and spreading the word about, you know, growing old is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I think our view we're on here, we're all about subconscious beliefs. And, and for me, aging means more wisdom. That's how, that's what I believe. And I, there's nothing wrong with wisdom. I think that's a beautiful, that's why we're here. Um, but I was, I know I read a little bit about your, your bio and, and how you got to write this beautiful book, but I would love to hear in your own words, how did you get to doing this work today? And I know we all love to hear about your, your famous um, voiceover days. <laughs> I'm sure many, me, me, I might be older. I mean, I'm in my thirties. I don't know. Maybe people probably born later might've never heard your voice, but anytime you call, was it 411 that you called? Yes. Yeah. I was, I was the eighties and nineties. The, the New York times dubbed me the most heard voice in America because I was the voice of directory assistance for a vast majority of the country. I know you may find that hard to believe my voice is a little <laughs> scratchy today. I'm here in Denver and we have a lot of smoke from the Ooh. Western fires. Unfortunately for all those folks, I feel so bad. And we're also getting their smoke, so it's affecting my voice. But at one time, you actually could hear a nice, clear voice. And I did that job. Uh, I auditioned for that job just was sort of a lark. And I had done some voiceover and commercial work before, but I was actually working as an advertising copywriter. And this uh, opportunity came along. It was kind of a, a side gig. It wasn't, it never replaced my, my day job, but uh, I did it. And they said, oh, your voice fits perfectly into our computer. And that's why I got the job because you don't have an accent and we could hear every word very clearly. So then all these companies, these Bell systems started buying up this computer program and, and my voice went along with it. And then I ended up being the voice for, for banks, for the Federal Reserve, for just all kinds of big, you know, transit systems. And yeah, so I was kind of everywhere. <laughs> And it was kind of a funny little sideline, but it was a tiny little claim to fame that I often forget about. But yeah, it was fun. It was. And how did I get into this whole uh, interest in aging? Well, yeah. uh, you know, Lauren, I mean, I think you become interested in it when you see the writing on the wall. I mean, I was about to turn 60 and that was 13 years ago. And I thought, you know, I don't know if I like the idea of the way society views aging. I don't want to feel like I'm going downhill. I don't want to feel like I've got to pedal faster to remain youthful, quote unquote. I don't know that I think this is what aging is about. And, and those were my personal feelings. So I started researching this whole concept of aging. And I delved back into ancient philosophy and history and anthropology. And to my great surprise, what I discovered was that a lot of ancient thinking uh, revolved around the idea that aging was that when you were old, that was the pinnacle of human achievement. Everybody wanted to live to be old. Everybody revered older people. When you wanted advice, when, for instance, and they still do this in Native American communities, and they do it in cultures around the world, the elders always have a say first as to what should we do? Where have we been? Where do we want to go? And of course, young voices are very important too. We wouldn't, we'd be lost without them because they are sort of the scouts for the future. But we often forget that the experience, perspective, and wisdom that older people bring to the table is equally as important. So when I started researching this and kind of developed a 
a philosophy about what it means to grow old, I um, decided to take all this. I had taught at two other graduate schools of business and I, I went to the University of Denver's continuing ed program and I said, I have an idea and they liked it. And so I ended up teaching four or five classes on that. And so one day somebody said to me, why don't you write a book on this? And why it didn't occur to me before, I don't know, because writing is really my first skill. I mean, I began my career as a writer. And all the way through that, that skill really kind of helped me get through, you know, I wrote a lot of scripts. I wrote, that's how I got a job on TV because I could write a script. Um, so yeah, it just seemed like a natural. And the more I delved into the subject and read every article I could get my hands on about aging, the more I became excited about it. So, you know, voila, here, here I am. Yeah, for me, learning about, you know, just as a woman in aging specifically, the archetypal different phases of life as a woman and postmenopausal, it's usually called the crone and shifting from, for me, viewing that as like, you are, instead of your hormones, every cycle, every month, you know, fluctuating you are now in tune with your wisdom all month long. And I can put some links in the show notes of like, you know, the different archetypal energies as a woman, but the crone is very revered and wise and it, it, it's the prime of her life and gets to go beyond and, and explore herself and share that wisdom with the world, which I feel like we, we've so disconnected from that energy in today's society we're so obsessed it's probably the best word to say with anti-aging or or scared of aging could you kind of talk to us why why aren't we obsessed with longevity versus what we're really obsessed with is like anti-aging or holding like desperately holding on to our youth <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, particularly um, present in our culture and and in Western cultures in general. Although I think in our country we're, <laughs> we're we've really uh, bought into the whole thing. We've uh, bought into the idea that younger is better, and uh, you know. I, Part of it is that there is a lot of money to be made when we promote the idea of a perpetually youthful self. Um, you know, there are a lot of baby boomers out there and I'm one of them. I'm sort of on that leading edge of the baby boomers because I was born in 1948. And so, um, you know, the idea that all those people are out there and if we can just keep them interested in staying young, we can sell a lot of wrinkle injections, wrinkle creams. We can sell everything from tooth whitener to sports cars uh, because you want to look young. So you got to drive the hip car. You've got to, you know, get the facelift. You've got to get tummy tucks and do all these things. Uh, and what we, of course, what we're missing is the, the, um, the wholeness of the human life. I mean, we, and we're also kind of this go get them culture that we really revere people in the middle because they're the ones, the movers and shakers who are making money, who are, you know, fueling our GDP and, and we're all about that. So when you get older, it's like, well, you know, what are you doing to infuse your energy into this uh, go-go culture? Well, uh, you know, what we're doing is helping the rest of humanity see the big picture. That's what older people do. So as I was saying, we are missing this wholeness of the human life cycle. You know, every part of the life cycle, Lord, is important. Childhood is so important. It's because where we take everything in and we begin to learn and we begin to see ourselves differently from other people. And then we also still see the whole and middle age and, and youth where you are and young middle age and middle age is where 
we go out and make our bark and take care of others. We take care of children. We take care of our parents. So we're doing a lot. We're very busy, but that's appropriate for people in that age group. And then the older people are the ones who can, who have the time and should make the time to reflect on their lives. What has life meant? Where have I gone? What do I want to do with the time left? We're the ones who help younger folks put life in perspective. And when you don't have that part of the human life cycle and you concentrate only on the young folks or the middle-aged folks, you're missing out on what it means to be a complete human being. Because being a, comp a complete human being means you've, you've traversed all these various cycles these various stages rather within the cycle of life. And when you come out at the end, supposedly, <laughs> you know, you come out with a better sense of yourself and maybe have a glimpse of what life is about, which is the ultimate question, isn't it? You know, what is this all about? And it's really an older person who is able to take a look at this seriously and maybe glean from all their years of living what indeed life means. And it's a huge question and we should look to elders to help us all answer it. Oh yeah, I, I, I completely agree with that. And I think also, you know, learning from your own mistakes but learning from generationally the mistakes too. I, I, I mean, I think one of the biggest things we're faced with is climate change. Yes. And, you know, how how can we shift our, our society's view, shift individualistic? What what are we doing day to day? But big picture. And I, I think tapping into older generations would be a great up, untapped, really, if you will, um, solution to this or resource, because we're talking about, <laughs> you know, climate change, and natural resources. Um, yeah, I, I think having the complete picture because. Well, you, you kept saying the word life cycle. Mm -hmm. And to me, the quote, nothing in nature blooms all year long. <laughs> right? Oh, that's beautiful. And it's so true. That's right. That's right. And for me, it you know, our culture is so go, 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 go more, 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 do, 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 do. And I think that promotes that um, middle age life, like you said, where we're so busy and doing all the things, but that doesn't mean that it's the right things that we should be doing all those things all year. The seasons teach us this too, you know, in the summer versus the fall or the dead of winter, you know, life itself is a cycle and, and you can't have one without the other. And I, I'm just so happy to have you on here to, to dive deep into these topics because it's important that we all know about it, no matter what age we are, we're all, we're all going to experience or hopefully experience the whole cycle of life and, and growing and, er, you know, earning that right to grow old, I think is a beautiful thing. And you kind of mentioned this at the beginning of kind of the marketing machine behind beauty and wellness and aging. Um, I would love to hear kind of your take on fear fear of the unknown as a great motivator. I'm, I'm, I mean, that's what they sell, you sell as a marketing motivator, but how is the fear of the unknown a great motivator? Could you talk about some of your philosophies you have behind that? Yeah, I think, and I think our culture kind of perpetuates this oh, yeah. too, because we reinforce the idea that old age is something to be afraid of. Uh, and fear is a motivator in part, and, and maybe fear of old age or, or realization of it, uh, and even fear of death, because we are, when we delve into the idea that we're going to get older, and that, that maybe that is scary, or that death is scary, we can be comforted by the fact that life is finite. If life were to just go on forever, we might not be able to accomplish some of the things that we all have accomplished. Uh, and that includes even reflecting on our own lives. I mean, if you think it's gonna go on forever, you're never gonna look at the big questions like what's life about? Why am I here? 
what can I do to make life better for everybody else? Uh, you know, what should I be contributing to our culture, to our society, to my neighbor? You're not gonna ask those questions because you don't have limits. And these limits actually uh, can be allies for us. So that fear, we can flip that around and say, well, okay, yeah, it is finite. And it, there are scary aspects to it because nobody wants things to end necessarily. Certainly the end of life is, is not something we necessarily look forward to. Although it's interesting when research on very old people shows that many of them um, are very, are ultimately sanguine about their own death. They have come to terms with it. And one of the reasons they have is because they've gone through this reflective process and are able to get to the point where they feel okay about the end of their life and what they have accomplished. And uh, even if their accomplishments aren't being famous at all, just maybe raising a family or being a, a good a partner to someone or volunteering, whatever they have done, or just exploring their own creative talents, that, that as you get very old, you, you become satisfied with that. And you are ready for the next step. And one of the things that I talk about in my philosophy is that uh, one of the reasons I think people are afraid of growing old is that death is that specter that, that hangs over old age and that we like to sweep that under the rug. We, we don't really bring death out and look at it closely. There are cultures that do. There are cultures that feel there is a thin veil between life and death and death is a process. It's not just something that's cut off, but that it goes on for a while. And those people are very comfortable with the idea of dying. And we're not, because we don't wanna think about it, just like we don't wanna think about getting older. We wanna pretend that everything's gonna go on forever, which is unfortunate because we're not really dealing in the, in the real world, I think. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, we just, we just don't wanna face it. Um, but I think it's important to bring death out in the open, to bring fear of death and fear of old age out into the open, to look at it and you know to come to terms with it. That's how you deal with a fear, is that you face it and come to terms with it and see, well, maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Yeah, I think of the, the, the saying, everything you ever wanted is on the other side of fear. And yes. it, it ties into this yes. because as you, as we accept that finite time, like you said, we, we do, we look at life differently. We look at our life, our, our, what we want to leave behind our legacy, if you will, whether it is being a good partner, volunteering or raising a family, you, you allow yourself to look at that big picture and what you want to do. Um, but you have to be able to get over that to, I want to say that not over the, accept that fear, mm -hmm. accept that finite time. And yeah, and it, I totally agree. Our culture is, you know, even in my own family is like, if you, if you say when I die, I want to, you know, my big thing is I would love to be buried in one of those tree urns. Um, I think it's just oh. so beautiful to be back in the part of nature. But when you say that yeah. to people, sometimes their reaction, especially loved ones might be like, don't speak of that, you know, don't, don't, yes. don't, don't. It, it's yes. like, it's like Beetlejuice. If you say it a few times, it might appear. <laughs> it's and I, very true. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to bring it on. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think we're going to bring it on. We're all going to end up that way. Yes. Um, but, you know, and, and I do think it's okay, Lauren, like, like you said, I'd like to be in a tree urn. I think it's okay to think about those things. Yeah. And as you get older, I mean, I've thought about it. Who do I want to be with me uh, when I die? I mean, if I don't die in an accident, I mean, none of us can predict exactly how we're going to go. But but if I have that opportunity to, you know, go gently into the next realm, uh, you know, who do I want to 
have with me? What do I want my death to look like? What do I want a funeral to look like? Do I want a funeral? Do I want my ashes spread? Do I want my body buried? What do I want? And those things actually, when you plan them, that it makes you more comfortable with the idea of death. It really does. It's sort of like, yeah, this will happen. But you take a little control back when you plan. And so it'll be interesting for you to see whether when you're my age or older, whether you still want to do the tree thing. I, it'll be and interesting. Yeah, because, and there may be even more options then. I mean, there are a lot more options than there used to be. But a part of it is, you know, when you're afraid too, taking back a little control doesn't hurt. So, and another thing too, and I, I think you'll appreciate that this, uh, that one of the things I think helps to sort of elongate time for people who have less of it, me and other people who are older than I, is to try to live more in the moment. And being older allows you to do that because we tend to be less busy, quote unquote, with everyday things as we were perhaps in middle age and, and in youth. Although <laughs> there are all those people out there telling older po folks to keep busy. And I don't really think that's the point. I mean, the, if busyness should be behind you. You should be doing things that excite you and, and, and bring on these feelings of bliss as you age. But being in the moment meditating is sort of stops time in a way, just like when I'm at the grocery store and I'm in line and I think, oh, I'm kind of in a hurry. Why is this line so long? I try to remind myself, this is a moment and you won't have it again. And it may not be glamorous, but you're alive and aware. There are people around you. Just take a moment to look around at the people who are in the store with you. Um, you know, be grateful for the fact that you can buy groceries and that you can feed yourself. Uh, and that you're in a place where people are generally kind to one another and polite and people smile and say hello. Just enjoy that. And when we get more into the moment, we find that time has a way of expanding so that it's, it's almost like when we're younger, we're hurrying, 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 but, but that time goes by so quickly. In a way, I think it goes by more slowly for me now, not only because I'm not quote unquote busy, but also because I try to uh, approach every moment with a certain amount of, uh, giving it a certain amount of importance because it does have importance. <laughs> and the older you get, the more each moment becomes uh, relevant. Mm -hmm. I love that. I was on a phone with one of my girlfriends today and that's our discussion. We go deep and it's, you know, what what is the how can you f be your fullest self well it's not about doing more it's about being aware mm -hmm. as much as you possibly can even in the grocery store and and even when you're chewing a, a bite of salad or you know tofurkey or chicken whatever you eat like <laughs> being aware and being present slows down time like you said it allows you to experience your senses and the pure pleasure and bliss yes. that it is just to be alive, a human yes. be being, not yes. a human doing. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so true, isn't it? We just yeah. have this idea we have to do, do, do all the time. And, and I really think that that is a, a, a sort of a negative message to send, particularly to older people. You know, I, one of the things you find People, like if you go to a party or something, they'll say, well, I haven't seen you in a while, keeping busy. That seems to be the phrase that comes out of everyone's mouth as if you've got to fill these moments rather than enjoying these moments. And I think the better question might be, well, I haven't seen you in a while. Well, what's, what's interesting to you these days? You know, yeah. that opens everything up like, oh gosh, well, what's interesting to me? Well, I'm really into walking. Uh, I love to read. I like to garden. And of course, 
with the book I have, I'm obviously busy promoting the book on some level that, <clears throat> pardon me, that kind of takes away from my feelings of not being busy, but it's also something I want to do, so that's okay. But I think asking somebody what interests them opens up a whole new conversation rather than, and I see it so much in my generation, keeping busy or your bucket list. Have you checked things off? As if a bucket list is just a list of to-do things. There we go again with doing. And rather than saying, you know, instead of a bucket list, maybe it's people I'd like to see now before I go or, you know, just simple little things. It doesn't have to be, you know, going to uh, Mount Kilimanjaro or something. I mean, that's fine. But the point is, it's almost like you're one-upping each other. Well, my bucket list has this. Well, mine has this, you know? And again, we're back in that whole competitive zone that younger folks are fairly comfortable in. And, and again, that's appropriate for them. It's not appropriate for older people, really, to spend all their time being competitive. You have a different role as an elder. And, uh, and that's what I like to encourage older folks to do. Yeah. And it reminds me of almost like keeping up with the Joneses mentality, yes. you know, one upping that, that, that list. And it's funny you said Kilimanjaro because my conversation, I just mentioned earlier, my friend mentioned Kilimanjaro. So it's a, it's a nice little synchronicity from oh, the universe, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it is. And it came up again for you it today. It came maybe. up again. Maybe I need to climb it. <laughs> maybe you do. And you're at the right time of life to be able to do that and do yeah. it healthfully and well. And yeah, absolutely. I think I think I had, I think I had somebody out to find the episode. I'm pretty sure I had a lady. She climbed Kilimanjaro. I did have a guy come on the show, a chiropractor who climbed Mount Everest. Wow. Um, yeah, which hearing his story of training and he hiked it two times up and the third time I think he was able to finish <sighs> and, and hike down that to me, that sounds amazing. It does. But is that how I want to be spending my time in conquering? Mm -hmm. hmm, maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. I Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say for me, no, even when, <laughs> even when I was young, I've never been, although people think I'm athletic because I'm tall and thin, but, um, I've never been particularly athletic. I don't trust myself climbing oh. that high. <laughs> that is very, very, very high. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> well, moving back to aging, I, I love your take on this and I, and I want to hear more about it. One of your top recommendations is to stop trying to age gracefully. Could you tell us more about what you mean by that and why that can be an issue? <laughs> well, I always feel when they tell people to age gracefully or, you know, I'm trying to age gracefully, it's almost like you're doing it for someone else. It's almost as if you're doing it because aging is, uh, isn't a pleasant thing. It's not a, an attractive thing. So you're trying to do it as gracefully as you can, like gracefully jumping over something, even though it could be messy. I mean, you don't ask a child to be a child gracefully. You don't say, Johnny, go out and play gracefully. You would never say that. But yet we somehow expect older people to tiptoe around their later years in order not to offend anyone. Well, you know, old age is old age and it can be messy. Yes, you, you will look older. Yes, you may have some things that will go wrong. Yes, you may have trouble getting around. Uh, that has nothing to do with attractiveness and you don't need to be graceful doing it. I would say the better message would be to grow old um, authentically. Grow old the way you feel is right for you, you feel is real for you. And if you have, if you've developed some sort of a disability, um, use that disability as a way to be more creative. Well, Let's see, I, I'm not able to do this, but I think I can do this. And maybe you find other outlets for 
uh, for your creativity, for your moments that are remaining, things you might not have ever thought of doing before because you had that. Again, those limits, sometimes we expand within these limits in ways that we aren't able to do so when the limits are limitless, if you will. So yeah, I just don't like that term aging gracefully. I think it's it's a sort of a pejorative way to describe how people should grow old. And again, should, it's to be authentic, to do it naturally because aging is so natural. It's what humans do, it's what we do. Yeah, since the moment we're born, we're aging. <laughs> Yes, we, we are. Yes, well, we even are. from conception, really, I guess. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole cycle of life, yeah. isn't it? And and it's it's unnatural to try to stop it or or to to turn things backwards because we can't go backwards. We can only go forward. So let's go forward and feel good about what remains and try to see it differently and try to see it authentically and try to be comfortable in who we've become. Yeah. And it reminded me of, you know, growing up, I've always looked ahead and was like, oh, I wish I was older. I wish I was yes. 16. I wish I was 18. I wish I was 20. I wish I would, you know, but that starts to slow down as you age, I think, and it, it reverses to I wish I was younger. That's <laughs> um, kind of what societal, you know, standards have been saying. But goes back to the point you made of being aware and being present. I think that's something important to incorporate in every single age and stage of your life because it's going to help lead you through any part of life cycle, of transition, of change, because that's age and change are two constant things that rest assured will happen and continue to happen no matter what you try doing mm -hmm. in this yeah. lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, I don't know that I would want to be younger, but if I could go back, I think one of the things that I regret, it isn't a huge regret, but it is a regret in that I didn't live more in the moment and that I didn't worry so much about what was coming around the corner. Oh my gosh, you know, career wise, whatever it was. I was pretty ambitious and I was caught up in that. And again, that's appropriate for someone in her, you know, 20s, 30s and 40s or even 50s. But as you get older, uh, that actually became less important to me. And I wish I had had that wisdom then. But of course, I didn't. And again, that's appropriate. I didn't get that wisdom until I had lived a number of years and was able to see, you know, where I could have done a better job of being in the moment and just being happy with a simple day rather than feeling I had to accomplish so much. But now I can do that and what a joy. And I think that's one little nugget, even though it's a powerful one of wisdom when it comes to incorporating all ages within your family, within society, maybe the, the corporate structure, government wise, I think any issue we're gathering of people, having especially older people there is not only as a sign of respect, but to be able to gain that wisdom and that perspective you talked about that we might not see because our heads are down and, you know, go, 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 go. It's just another example of having this collective voice heard, not just one yes. little age gap. Yeah, it's the balance. And yeah. it's one of the things I feel I can give back to younger people when they ask for my advice. And yeah. I, I often say that, you know, the things you're worrying about today won't be so meaningful, up, you know, down the road. You're not going to say, I wish I'd spent more time texting. No, <laughs> you're not going to say that. Trust me. <laughs> maybe the opposite maybe the opposite probably I think so yeah I definitely think so yeah um which kind of brings me to my next point uh respect and why do we feel that so many younger people don't respect seniors and what can we do to change that 
Well, I do think that is part of the culture that we yeah. think that older people are expendable. There are so many cultures around the world where older people are revered, not just respected, but revered. And we listen to them first before we listen to anybody else. But I also blame, I blame the culture, but I also blame some older people too, because I think the older people who are so involved in trying to be younger than they are and trying to be hip and trying to do the things that younger folks do. Um, I think they're the ones who don't help us engender respect from young people. I mean, it's hard to respect somebody who's trying to be like you and doing a bad job of it. <laughs> you know, um, I think when older people uh, genuinely take on the mantle of being an elder, when they genuinely say to themselves, I am 80 years old or however old they are, I deserve respect. I want to be listened to. I want respect. And you can call people out on it. I think that's when the culture will begin to change. One of the things that I hear from well, men and women, but you know, you'll go to the, again, the grocery store and, and you're standing there at the, I don't know, the bakery counter or something. And the, uh, the guy comes up from behind the counter and says, well, what can I get for you today, young lady? I mean, older people hear this a lot. Well, young lady, well, young man. And I correct them in a nice way. I say, you know, I'm not a young lady. Um, I know you're trying to make me feel better, but I really feel terrific about being in my 70s. And someday you will be too, and you'll feel good about it. I always try to turn it around so that they don't feel bad because they're just trying to make me feel better. But we need to get rid of some of that language that makes that again, you know, it's like, oh, look, you're 80 years young. No, I'm 80 years old. Old is a good word. We use it to describe architecture and wine and art and paintings. I mean, I want to get in on that too. I want people to say, wow, you're old. Yes, I'm old. How cool is this? So we need to, you know, we do need to call people out on it in order to get more respect. But we also have to stop trying to be young people ourselves because again, we can't do it. We're not gonna do it well and we're gonna look ridiculous. So get over it, be who you are, be real, be okay with the age you are and celebrate it. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side of that young lady comment, I in my family, I've seen if somebody calls my mom, ma'am, especially even in her like 40s and 50s, I remember growing up, she would become very offended because in her <laughs> mind, that was an old lady saying. Yes. And, and I said, if someone calls me ma'am today, I kind of puff my chest up and go, thank you. You know, I, I, I see yes. that was a sign of respect, but little things like that, whether it's call, calling you a young lady or ma'am, like accept where you are and who you are and, mm -hmm. and speak up about it in a positive way, just like you I said. Think, I think you can. I think one of the things I loved about uh, Paris when we visited, everywhere I went, it was bonjour, madame. Ooh. Every, you know, <laughs> bonjour, madame. And I loved that. The way, madame. madame. Oh, that made me feel just so special. <laughs> And I wouldn't want to be bonjour, mademoiselle, because I'm not a miss. I am a ma'am, and I've earned that, yeah. and I feel okay about it. So you're right. You're yeah. right. Awesome, awesome. Absolutely. Well, before we start to close the show down today, I, I just looked at the time. Could you tell us a little bit about your book, kind of the synopsis? I mean, it's about aging, of course, but what to expect, and you can get it on Amazon and Barnes & Noble as well? Yes, you can. Uh, and you can go to Outskirts Press, my okay. publisher. Um, I would sum it up by saying probably this, that um, growing old is not about defying the aging process. It is about immersing yourself in it. Let yourself grow old. Find out what it is about. Be curious about it. 
like you've been curious about every other life stage. You'll be surprised what glories you'll find in this time of your life. And as I'm very fond of saying, you're only old once, so make the most of it. Oh man, Mike, drop on that. I love that. Thank you. Well, we, we close out every show thanking you again for showing up for us today and imparting your beautiful wisdom, well-earned wisdom with age here, um, but also showing up for yourself and, and researching and, and, and I'm assuming changing your own perspective on aging over yes. the years. <laughs> yes, I have. Thank heavens. <laughs> yeah. And how may we, the listeners, as an act of gratitude, be of service for you in return today? Oh, gosh, I say um, be who you really are. I think it's so important. Young people are so busy. They try out certain personalities. They want to please other people. Be yourself. It will serve you well. And as you age, you will more and more come into your own. You'll be amazed at how you'll be so comfortable with who you are as a human being by the time you get to my age. Just be yourself, follow your gut, and, and uh, take care. Oh, beautiful. That's the, I think that little snippet there is the secret to life. That's, yes, that's what it's all I do. about. Yeah. yeah. Be authentic. Be who you are. Stand up for what you believe in. Don't be afraid. Just be who you are. If you make mistakes, it's fine. Uh, but the point is, ultimately, the goal is to come into uh, your real self, to be in touch with your core of who you are. And you have a head start when you already are starting to be yourself, even as a young person. Yeah, I'm sure many of the listeners on here, you are well on that way, tuning into witchy wellness and tuning into your intuition and thinking outside of the box. And yeah, so thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Kathleen, for coming on the show. It was such a pleasure learning and listening to you today. My pleasure. Thank you, Lauren. And remember, open up, surrender, trust, and let your body lead the way.